Morning, y'all. Morning, and welcome to Drag Me to Church at MCC Portland today. Welcome to church. We wanted to begin with just a few words of introduction, particularly to those who might be um, new or newer to us. You might be curious about what's happening today. So we're going to introduce ourselves, say a few words about that. I am today uh, Sister Miriam Shakina Ruha Shambhala Jones. You can simply call me Sister Miriam today. I can't say it all. Okay, oh, go ahead, go ahead, come on. Go ahead. I don't think I really can. You got to get the Holy Ghost hop, though. Okay. And good morning, y'all. I am Polly Parson. Polly! And grateful to be with you. Yeah. So we, there are all kinds of reasons why we are doing Drag Me to Church today. As you are well aware, legislation and discrimination against drag performers is increasing across our country, as well as increasing discrimination for trans folk. And on this particular Sunday, it is in fact a little bittersweet because we had already planned this Drag Me to Church occasion before we learned, before Darcel, our local drag legend, passed away on Thursday evening. So we are joyful and also remembering someone who made such a difference mm -hmm. as a drag queen. Y'all, there are people out there who are being mean to our queens. Mean. Mean. And we're not having any of that here, okay? We love our queens, right? Yes. We're going to show them our love today. I know you all love the precious performers and gender benders in our community. And that is why we are paying tribute to them today and celebrating the great tradition of gender bending performance that belongs to our queer ancestry. And, yes, 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 yes. And needless to say, well, it is important to say, it also needs to be celebrated in church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only because church has its own mm -hmm. um, twist of drag throughout the ages, I'll say a little bit more about that, mm. but because so much of the discrimination against queer people, against trans folk, against drag queens, just underneath the rhetoric, you give it a little scratch and it is religious bigotry that is driving it. So we need to counter that message by saying, drag is welcome at MCC Portland. Mm -hmm. so. You come any way you want any Sunday. It doesn't have to be drag Sunday. Y'all hear me? Yeah. That's right. I just want you coming through those doors looking like the self you feel like being this morning. Yes. Whatever that is. And if it changes over time, the name tags are especially helpful. <laughs> just saying, just saying, just saying, just saying. You just tell us what we should call you, and that's what we'll call you, darlings. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. We're I'm ready. Gonna I'm going to light a candle, and then I'm going to offer a prayer, and then I'm going to give you some helpful information about this space. I can't light this on fire. Uh-uh. I'll be a piggy in a blanket. All right. So precious, precious spirit. God of laughter and of playfulness. God who created the platypus. We invite you the God of the unexpected and even the bizarre, to this space with us. Thank you for loving our unexpected and bizarre places too, and for inviting us to be our whole selves in you. Welcome, welcome, welcome spirit. Amen. All right. Some of y'all got dragged through those doors and you didn't know what was... In inside this building because you haven't been here before. 
So my job is to make you feel welcome. So the first thing to know is where the bathrooms are. It's very important. It is not on this floor. You have to go down through the doors and then down the stairs, and they're on the hall to your left. Now, if stairs are not working for you for any reason, there's a lift when you go through those double doors on your left. And that's what you can take a little ride down to to find the bathrooms. Make sure both doors are closed when you ride down or the lift will not operate. Mm -hmm. If you have any problems, someone would love to assist you. But it's pretty much a button, and you make sure both the doors are closed. Um, what else? We are online, which means that there are people watching us online this morning. Welcome. Good morning. So. So if you are sitting in front of the rainbow ta tape on the back pews back there, in the center aisle, you say the rainbow tape. If you're sitting in front of that, somebody online can probably see at least you and maybe the, just the back of your head, OK? If you don't want to be seen on camera, you can sit behind the rainbow tape. And when you are invited to come up for communion, which we do every week here, at MCC Portland, it, you don't have to worry about be, the camera because the camera will change its angle the cross. to the cross. the cross. Oh, the camera just goes up to the cross. OK. All right. The camera will not be on you, though. So you're welcome to come forward for communion without being seen by everyone on the internet. And because we are also an online service, you can, you can even check out our online worship hub while you're here in your seats if you'd like. I invite those of you who are worshiping with us online to click on the link in the chat. That'll take you to our online worship hub where you can find resources like the order of service, the, the, um, the link for offering, the link to sign up for our e-newsletter so you can stay in touch with, with what's happening in this community, and et cetera. So the online worship hub is the place for, for resources. There's a QR code in the, the back of the seat in front of you if you want to check it out here as well. Um, and you can, you can be online and in person if you feel like it, if you really want to go to church twice this morning. <laughs> um, and we love children. We love children here. So this is our children's table right up front here. Children are invited to come, to color, to play with toys, to make noise, to shake things during the, the worship service. Adults are invited to do that too, by the way. If you, if you feel like being an adult with a little playful streak, you're welcome to bring that. You're welcome to bring that. That's welcome. And, uh, hmm, Sister Miriam? Oh, never mind. Child care. Thanks. Thank you, Todd. You just keep on writing your sermon, honey. You just keep writing. <laughs> You're taking it back for me. <laughs> we also have supervised child care. So if your child does not want to sit through a service, um, there is a wonderful place they can go downstairs and, and, uh, have, and have supervision, a beautiful play space for them, so you can listen to a service in peace. And if that's all you need, if all you need is one hour to yourself once a week, you're welcome. And finally, our beads. I know this is fashionable, but I'm not only wearing it because it matches my hair. We have a bead system here at MCC Portland that helps you indicate your consent around people being in close proximity and to communicate how important masking is to you. So if you're wearing green, it means you're feeling real comfortable this morning. You're feeling really loving this morning. You really just want to get some hugging in some this morning, OK? And that's fine. Don't hug without consent, even if you're wearing green beads, though. All right, if you're wearing gold beads, it means you might have 
well, a cause for caution, in this case, I have a child at home who's sick. I feel fine, but you might want to like give me a little extra space, you know. Um, if you are immunocompromised, this is an indication that you might want to give me a little extra space just in case. And the red beads mean I really don't feel for any reason, I don't have to discuss why or explain to you, like being very close to another human being today. So give me my space. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you approach such a person, I recommend that you do it from a distance and mask, especially if they're masked. That's how we show respect and consent in this community. Right, y'all? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to invite you to stand up and welcome those who are worshiping online and say hi to one another appropriately and with consent. Woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on freedom Well, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on freedom Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah Whoa, ain't no harm in keeping your mind Stay there ain't no heart in keeping your mind. Stay on freedom. Ain't no harm in keeping your mind. Stay on freedom. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, I'm walking and talking with my mind. I'm up, everybody. Stay on free. Oh, walking and talking with my mind. Stay on freedom. Oh, walking and talking with my mind. Stay on freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Singing and praying with my mind. Stay. I'm singing and praying with my mind. Staying on freedom. Hallelujah. 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 All right, now get your somber face on. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside it.
great I am While millions join the theme I will sing, I will sing While millions join the theme I will sing and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called. Outcast, lonely or afraid, I will change your name. Your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcome. God, one who seeks my face. Lovely to hear your voices this morning. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, my name is Darce. My pronouns are he, him. And um, I have the honor of having been asked to speak about a woman who means a lot to me named Sister Paula Nielsen. Um, the timing is incredibly fitting because not only was she an incredible woman, she was also an incredible drag performer and a close personal friend of uh, Darcel the 15th. Um, so I'd like to open with uh, a, little, a little passage from Sister Paula's book, Avenues to Inner Peace, um, that I think is particularly fitting today. Um, she says, I'm happy and proud to say that I worked with Darcel the 15th as a cabaret entertainer for 12 years. To up-and-coming entertainers in training, Darcel preached a one-word sermon. That sermon is smile. Darcel often said, you can get away with just about anything on stage if you will just smile. This fact is not only true on stage, but can be applied in all areas of everyday living. And um, something that I find particularly inspiring about Sister Paula is that that is one of the things that she really lived very publicly in a way that she gave a really incredible gift to the world by showing us a wild example of what you can do in this life. A uh, quote of hers that I find that that I find particularly inspiring, and this was a I guess not a quote of hers, but something that she would say, um, is that you shouldn't tell somebody that something can't be done while they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that she did, um, to introduce her the way that she introduced herself. I guess first I want to acknowledge that I'm in kind of an interesting position here um, because some of you have not encountered Sister Paula's story, um, but some of you knew her personally. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm kind of, you'll forgive me for any, uh, any mistakes that I, that I might make. Um, for myself, I never met her in life, but I also received the privilege of meeting her immediately after she passed away and being present for her natural burial in Riverview Cemetery. Um, and I, I can say that um, personally, I feel her very alive um, today. But 
to her story, uh, to introduce her the way that she would introduce herself. Uh, she was born Larry Nielsen um, in July 13th of 1938. Um, she came to know Jesus as not only her savior, but her best friend at age 12 um, in a Pentecostal church and was baptized in the spirit at age 15. Um, she transitioned to living as Paula Nielsen full-time in 1936, um, which was, uh, you know, she was one of those people who, for people of my generation, it's like, oh my God, like, like you did it. Like you just existed and like made it possible for us to exist. But she didn't just do that. She did it extremely publicly. Um, something that she was incredible at was combining the power of entertainment and comedy with the power of speaking very openly about the gospel. And the trick was that she was right. <laughs> Um, she spoke about not only the gospel, but she spoke about how to be a good person, and she did it with a smile. Um, she was a comedy burlesque drag performer, um, and she began entertaining at Darcel, the 15th show place in the 1980s. Um, if we could get the next slide. I've got three. Thank you. Um, she had her own public access TV show where she would preach the gospel um, that was available in Portland, Seattle, and in Los Angeles and then continued to preach on the internet um, as that became uh, an outlet. Something that was, that was so incredible about her is she found global stages by being as eccentric as she was. Like you, you can see her, you can still find it on YouTube, um, an interview of her on BBC. And while there was a laugh track like that was inserted at some, at the, uh, the, the artistic points, um, she was still there, and people still walked away having seen her speak her truth and just be an incredible trans person. You know, she'd be there as the punchline, but she was part of the joke. She took, she took control of the stage, and that's, and that's how she was able to do what she did. She also, when you, when you look her up online, you'll find a lot of people struggling to find the words to describe who she was and how big she was as a person. Um, one thing that I was able to find to try to, to, try to kind of create a, a picture of how she would really walk the walk was she would volunteer at HIV and AIDS clinics. Um, she would bring food to unhoused people um, after. Um, so she went to, at the end of her life, she was going to a Baptist church downtown here. And after, after uh, the, the church service, she would go up to the, the pastor and she would always sing a song and it took him a while to realize that it was the song that came to her, like that came to her while she was truly metabolizing the the sermon. Um, she she was an incredible woman, and I personally really strive every day to be like Sister Paula. One of her really incredible quotes that gets me as a trans person through. Two things that have gotten me through, two reasons why I'm still sitting here at 74 years old as an open trans person preaching the gospel is my sense of humor and God's intel angelic protection of my life. And I think that that's something that gets all of us through. So thank you again for having me. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> First, I should extend my gratitude for Pastor Nathan inviting me to be here this morning and welcoming me into this space. At MCC Portland, I know that we like to have conversation with the children here in the space, either their chronological children or the child inside of all of us. So I want to start with a question for the children in the room. All of us are children of God, so that counts. What outfit do you have? Or what article of clothing do you have that makes you feel powerful? That makes you feel special? Anyone have something to... to... <laughs> Let's use the microphone so we can hear. And if you raise your hand, Stanley. And by the way, if you haven't seen... Uh, uh, and yes, the beautiful pink little, uh, those aren't even a kitten heel, those are slippers, those are sweet, sweet. Yes, Stanley. Okay, 
I have at home is Hunter's Camouflage. That looks like, well, well Oh, camouflage, camouflage, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, with trees and leaves on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that because it reminds me of the outdoors of Oregon, and I like hiking, mm-hmm. so that's... So it reminds you of a place that you love and treasure. Yeah. Enrique, you were sharing something. Kevin, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I was, the phrase that I, that I used was depends. Mm-hmm on the situation, but apparently I've just been informed that that's a, that's, a, that's a different type of garment that makes you people feel more assured and secure. But it all depends on the situation that I'm in. And um, yes, in court where I work is the suit and tie. Mm-hmm. Always, always are very apropos. That's a uniform that's expected, is it that not? Is, uh, well, not much. No, it's not. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, for those old school folks like us, it's, uh, it, it, it's what we do, but not much anymore, you know. Times are changing. Times are changing. Someone else, what um, outfit or article of clothing do you have that makes you feel powerful, special, or allows you to reveal a part of yourself that isn't always visible? Woo. I'll come back. I'm on my way here. And in heels, I can't stop quickly. Okay. <laughs> I have a number of stocking caps. The mm. stocking cap is my chair fair trade headwear because my ears are usually cold. If my ears are cold, I'm all cold. So I wear stocking caps. There you go. There you go. Wave. For me, it's socks. And I say that. Ah, socks. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I was in a job where I did do uh, suit and ties every day and the tie, I really splashed out in the most extravagant or unusual ones as a distinctive. But when I stopped doing that or working in a place, I thought it the best way to feel, I guess, unique or different and actually state my place are socks. So I have a few hundred of all outrageous colors and styles that I use. A few hundred. Mm -hmm. Did I see you back there? Uh, Miss, the divine Ms. D, yes. I've got one on mine. Mercy says her white tiger onesie and her furry wolf vest. Yes. Oh, I, I, I am so glad we heard from Mercy. Even if she can't be in the room, she is with us still. That's wonderful. Anyone else to share something that, you, an outfit or an article of clothing that makes you feel special or powerful that or allows you to reveal a part of yourself? Well, that would be my leather boots and my leather jacket, of course. Mmm, oh, that's a whole other ensemble, is it not, Polly Parsons? <laughs> yes, oh, and our beloved Kelly, yes. Uh, I really hadn't thought of anything until just now. Many years ago, when I was six years old, our pastor's oldest daughter, Naomi, uh, was getting married. And I walked up to Naomi one day and I said, Naomi, would you wait for me until I get 18? And she smiled back and I forget what she said. She gave me a hug. So after the fabulous wedding, it was a fabulous wedding and she had this long train. I was over at the church with my dad the next morning and the, the pastor's family lived in a back wing of the church. I was walking through the hallway and there was Naomi's bedroom and I opened the door and there was her wedding dress laying on a chair. I went and I put on the wedding dress and pranced around the room. I've never felt so powerful before or since. Mm. Oh. Well, that is a drag testimony, is it, isn't it? One more, anyone else? An article of clothing or an outfit that you wear that makes you feel special or powerful or that allows you to reveal a part of yourself. Oh, let's have Todd over here. And then one more. We'll, we'll finish off with the divine Miss D. Uh, I have struggled to be, have any fashion sense my entire life. Um, but I bought a sweater through an Instagram ad and I wore it uh, for the last three days, every single day. And I got more compliments and just, I just felt seen every time I wore this sweater. And uh, I was like, that's, that's a powerful thing to have something that, that makes you feel seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
There you go. To wear something that makes you feel seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say my kilt. Um, you've seen me wear it here, but yeah, I finally got one last Pride Month, and yeah, it's very comfortable and very glad I finally took the leap. So even if in its full or even, shall we say, heightened forms, drag may seem a little unusual or foreign to us sometimes, we all have something in our lives, some clothing that we wear that allows us to connect with part of ourselves and that is visible to the outside world. It makes something that is invisible visible. And I just realized as I say that, that is the definition of a sacrament, is it not? An outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual reality. Too bad that isn't the sermon. <laughs> the sacrament of drag. Next drag me to church Sunday. All right. Let's hear a reading from scripture. Good morning. Good morning. Today's reading comes from, from Ephesians. Come on, honey. Can you hear me now? All the way from heaven? OK. Today's reading comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in Christ and in the strength of Christ's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present evil age, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Sister Mary would trip and break a hip at my age. All right. <clears throat> so, when I was preparing for this Drag Me to Church Sunday, when I received the invitation or call, shall we say, for a message on this Sunday, I was drawn to that particular scripture. But before we get to working our way through that scripture, I do want to acknowledge once again how very important it is for us to take this moment in a Christian church community. To be in drag, to celebrate drag, to support drag. And lest it seem like a foreign setting, we actually know a lot about drag in church. I do want to quote one of the most famous drag queens, if not the most famous drag queen in the world, RuPaul Charles. And I'm going to cue the slides for you, Dylan. We're all born naked, and the rest is drag. <laughs> she even has a song, we're all born naked, and the rest is drag. So regardless of what you wear on this or any other day, when it comes right down to it, you're in drag. You're in drag. 
whether it is an expression of your own sense of gender or sexual identity or any other thing, you were born naked, and when you aren't naked, you're in drag of some sort or another. And church knows a whole heck of a lot about drag. Dylan, come on, centuries worth, and what queen isn't drooling over some of those vestments. But I will say, the queen in the center there um, is certainly holding court, but is not happy about it. <laughs> certainly holding court, but not happy about it. So when I was drawn to this passage from Ephesians, it came to me as a scripture that would speak to the occasion. And if you'll recall, the letter to the Ephesians is attributed to the Apostle Paul. There's some disagreement about whether it was him or not, but we will, we will stick with tradition and say Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, and it was about the year 60. So um, not quite 30 years after the death of Jesus. And Paul was in prison, is believed to be the setting of when he wrote this letter to the community in Ephesus. He was famous for writing letters to the churches that he planted that sometimes he could visit and sometimes he couldn't. So Paul was in prison and he was writing this letter to people, followers of Jesus, that where they were, were finding themselves in struggle, in a real struggle to be who they were. They were facing opposition, even being excluded from their families. They were being brought before religious authorities and told, you can't be part of our community if you continue to believe what you believe and act as you act. They were even brought before local political authorities. And eventually, many, if they did not recant, would suffer death. So this is not just a, this is not just hyperbole that Paul is talking about. There was real struggle for the persons who were receiving and hearing and reading this letter for the first time. And they were hearing it from those circumstances, realizing that the struggle was if they didn't recant, if they didn't hide themselves, they would say, face serious consequences. Paul recognizes this struggle and calls it a spiritual battle. He recognizes that even though it might be embodied in certain persons, it is not about the flesh and blood persons. It is actually a battle against spiritual forces, forces of evil, as Paul names them, and says, you need to be ready for spiritual battle. You know that saying, dress for the job you want? Well, Paul was helping describe for those who were going to be facing struggle and spiritual battle how it was they were to equip and dress themselves. Who knew that Paul was going to be giving um, tips for the ensemble uh, to early Christians? Now, I am not a great fan of any kind of militaristic imagery. And before we get to those images, I do want to point out that you'll notice that all of the images that he uses, all of the metaphors that he uses, are actually defensive. They are not typically aggressive or violent aggressive images. They are defensive images. So what Paul does is he uses a familiar description as a metaphor. Now the people he was talking to, this was the Roman Empire, they knew what gladiators looked like, they knew what the military tromping through their streets looked like in their Roman military gear, and armor. So they knew exactly what this looked like when he was describing what he describes. 
And he uses that as a metaphor to say what they needed to have as spiritual armor. <clears throat> so as I was thinking about this, I was struck by some surprising connections between the armor that would have been the ancient Roman armor that Paul is using to describe and actually some essential components of drag queen attire. Mm. You already got, well, I see a, a, a little a, a head shaking right there. Don't you? Mm -hmm. you got it, you know. <laughs> Buckle up, okay. So in, in an order, not exactly the same order as Paul's, let's just go through those parts of armor that Paul is admonishing those early followers to put on for the battle. First, breastplate. That is a replica of, an, of one of many different kinds of ancient Roman military breastplates. You know what else is called a breastplate in drag? There you go. The latex or plastic false bosoms that are worn by drag queens in order to have, this is not that, this is also not natural, you just have to guess what that is. It's also called a breastplate. A breastplate. They're different, but how different are they really? They surround that part of one's body that is most vulnerable. They protect one's heart, do they not? Breastplate of righteousness. Draggy enough? There's more. <clears throat> Shoes. Now, that is what an ancient Roman soldier's sandals would have looked like. They had uh, studs in the lower uh, underneath. They were sort of nailed together, so they would clatter. They would make noise, even though they were rather slender sandals. A very familiar sight to those folks in Ephesus and throughout the Roman Empire. The shoes of a drag queen. Okay. You can, have, you can have an up close and personal look at the shoes of a drag queen right there. And, and I would say those have none on what Carrie is wearing. No, 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 no. So, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but if those, no, no, back up, back up, we're not done, we're not done yet, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not done. I'll cue you, thank you, thank you, Ms. D. Um, <clears throat> I don't know which would be scarier stomping towards me. Now, I'm not <laughs> which would be scarier stomping towards me? And just a word about the, sh the, 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 the shoes of a drag queen. Why that is so scary is a drag queen that can do a backflip and drop into a death drop wearing shoes like that. That is a natural phenomenon and that is terrifying. And you gotta take that seriously. Okay. Next, helmet. Helmet, we know what a helmet is. We know what a helmet is. You wear it on top of your head. It also protects a very vulnerable part of one's body and one's anatomy, but also it was a way of demonstrating rank and identifying someone within your cohort. What about the helmet of a drag queen? There she is. My, 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 my. <clears throat> the bigger the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> there is not much getting through that wig. There is not much that is gonna make it through that wig. But I'll tell you, here's the difference between that ancient Roman helmet and the helmet of a drag queen. <clears throat> not so scary when the helmet is on the drag queen's head. When the drag queen yanks the helmet off, that's when you need to be afraid because they're about ready to go in. So, yes, helmet. <clears throat> Sword, also very familiar. That's Russell Crowe, I think, in Gladiator, is it not? Yeah, Russell Crowe, famous. That is a sharp, pointy object. 
We know from sharp, pointy objects. Dangerous. Handle carefully. Part of the suit of armor. What about the sword of a drag queen? Their tongue. There is no one with a quicker wit and with a lipstick smile and just the right turn of an insult and a little wink of a beaded lash will leave you in shreds. Which is also a danger, just like every sharp, pointy object. It must be handled and wielded carefully. But it is sharp. And it, oh, by the way, that's Bianca Del Rio, one of the winners of RuPaul's Drag Race. I can't remember which season, four maybe, but mm, one of my faves. Sword of a warrior, both in ancient Rome and the sword of a drag queen warrior. <clears throat> now, what about belt? Fasten the belt is the English version we had. And I initially was thinking, oh, that's kind of like corseting it up a little bit. But no, actually, the Greek words that are translated into English as fasten the belt is, is that expression, gird your loins. Who's heard that expression, gird your loins? Anyone know exactly what gird your loins means? OK, well, gird your loins, it means to prepare yourself for action, to get ready. But in the ancient world, when particularly men wore tunics down to their knee or even longer, to gird one's loins, that's a little how to gird your loins. That is actually um, from, I have no idea how old it is, but that, those are little frames from a biblical manliness training guide. <laughs> that is the how to gird your loins. So you lift up your tunic, you bring it up and then back, and you tuck it in the belt that is around your waist so that you have secured your tunic high enough so that you can move much more freely and your tunic is not in the way. So you essentially tuck and belt to gird your loins. All right. <clears throat> the unexpected drag equivalent of girding your loins is tucking. OK. So, um, <clears throat> so because Sister Miriam is a modest, sanctified church lady, I'm not exactly sure how much detail we So just by a show of hands, how many know what tucking is in the drag world? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But just a reminder for those queens that are born um, cisgendered male anatomically, when they are wanting to do drag to appear more stereotypically female, particularly if they're wearing close fitting clothing on the lower half of their body, actually tuck away that which would be visibly distinguishable as male parts of the anatomy. So they tuck, and there are even tucking belts, if you're a little more sophisticated than using duct tape. <clears throat> so there you go. Fasten the belt, gird your loins. Unexpected, unexpected similarity between the ancient world and drag queens. So, levity in that Bible study. A few laughs, yay, we need it, it's good. You can't, if you can't laugh around drag, then you are, then you're kind of missing the point. <clears throat> but I am deadly serious right now. We are, in fact, in a period of spiritual struggle and spiritual battle. And what the passage from Ephesians 
reveals to me and maybe to us that there is no one better dressed for this battle than drag queens. Which is also perhaps why they are among the first targets, because they are seen as the most powerful and dangerous. They're not a danger to children. They're a danger to the adults who cannot bear to have anything other than very clear-cut binary roles of sexual expression and gender expression. That's what the fear is, because drag queens are powerful. Drag queens are powerful. And they are well-equipped, perfectly equipped, for this battle. In times like this, we all need to recognize the battle that is before us. And drag queens have always led the way. Hashtag Stonewall. Drag queens lead revolution. In times like this, it's not just about drag queens as we well know. We also know that trans persons, particularly trans youth, are being discriminated against, increasing numbers of bills that are withholding life-saving care, health care for trans youth. And if you haven't heard, just was it two days ago, the country of Uganda passed legislation that makes it, you can get up to a 20-year prison sentence for identifying as gay, lesbian, bi, or trans. Not, not doing anything other than identifying oneself as queer. You can go to jail for 20 years. You may not know. We have an MCC congregation in Kampala, Uganda. What are our MCC siblings feeling right now in Uganda? We are in a time of spiritual battle. This is serious stuff. As joyful as it is, it is also life-saving and serious. Last but not least, the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Paul is exhorting those believers in struggle in Ephesus to hold on to their faith, for it is what will, in that colorful imagery, quench the fiery arrows that are shot at them. Your faith has that kind of strength. Doesn't mean the arrows still won't come, but you have a shield that can prevent the most serious damage. But beyond just preventing, capturing, stopping those fiery arrows from hitting us, I dare say we who have a sense of faith and queer people who have a sense of faith are shields for others who have not yet learned or known that they have all of the parts of the ensemble to go into battle. We can and must be the shield of faith for those who do not yet know, do not yet know that they are beloved and created exactly in the image of God, exactly as they are, regardless of how their gender expression blooms over time, regardless of whom they love. We can be their shield until such time as they can carry the shield themselves. So there are a few actions, simple actions, I'm going to urge us to take. This is just one thing we can do. It's fun. And granted, well, it's not necessarily easy. I mean, I wasn't. But it's fun and easy-ish to do this here in our space. I want to really urge us to go 
elsewhere and support drag performers where they are. There are a few, oh, Dylan is finding the slides for that. They should, they should come right after this. Yeah. Hello? La, 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 la. We see all of the, we see the cranky. Oh, did it go away? It went away. Okay, well, I will tell you verbally, you don't know, I will tell you verbally, there are four, four, three or four simple things. Oh, merciful heavens. Okay, I didn't bring my readers, did I? Okay, ways to support your local drag performers. First off, socialize and do business at venues that host drag events. There it is, look at that, woo Socialize and do business at venues that hold drag events. That's not just bars and clubs, but it's often bars and clubs. Whether you're going to for the show or not, find out places that support and go and support them. Even if you can't go to the drag brunch at the, oh, I have just forgot the, the, um, the place in Vancouver that has been vandalized because they had drag brunch. Even if you can't go to the drag brunch, you can go there and have a meal or a beer. And of course, then attend drag shows. But remember, many of us don't carry around loose cash anymore. Many drag performers, that is a primary or an important secondary source of income. So bring cash to tip the performers at the drag performance. Make your weekend brunch. Who doesn't love a weekend brunch? Make your next weekend brunch a drag brunch. There's more than one that goes on every weekend in Portland. You know, you can find them. You can find them. Make your next brunch a drag brunch. And I would even say invite people from church to go to drag brunch with you and tell them that you are from a church. Church group a drag brunch. Can you imagine how much fun that would be for people? Yeah, yeah. And last but not least, take your children or your families, your friends that have children to a drag queen story hour. Help everyone recognize that drag queens are healthy and wholesome to be around children and are actually providing a beautiful service for all of our families and children, regardless of whether we identify in the queer community or not. Oh, I, I, I will take that as an amen. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Well, Jack got the last word. I'd invite you to pray with me. <laughs> God, we are so grateful for all of the surprises that you bring into our lives. Surprises that emerge from within us, surprises that appear next to us and awaken something within each of us. God, help us to recognize how beautifully each and all of us are created, regardless of what we look like on this or any other day regardless of what we wear. God, you created us all naked, all equal. Mm. And over time, we just layer on all kinds of different things. Many of them are healthy and wholesome and affirming. So many of them are restricting and confining and harmful. God, we know you call us to life to even more abundant life. We pray that we might follow the stirring of your spirit so that that life which emerges within us becomes visible to all around us. In your holy name we pray. Uh -huh. I'm <laughs> 
about what's happening in the life of MCC Portland. Let's see if Sister Mary remembers any better than Pastor Nathan does when it comes <laughs> to the announcement time. <laughs> so just a reminder that we do prepare and send an e-newsletter weekly if we have your correct email address. You can uh, include that in the connection card that you can complete online or here in the room. There's a paper connection card and you can place that in the offering plate in the center aisle. We send it directly to your email. We also post it on our church Facebook page. And on a typical Sunday, we have paper copies in the lobby. Not this Sunday, but I have a paper copy if you don't access that online. Using the connection card is a really wonderful way to give us your contact information or update it if it has changed. It's also a perfect way to share your prayers with us. You can write it on the card. You can use, it. You can use the black prayer books that are found in the lobby. You can email, call the church office. You can post it in our uh, chat during the live stream and we capture all of those. Private prayers are kept within our prayer team. You can indicate if your prayer is private. The rest are public prayers that are shared with our community included in our e-newsletter. A few things coming up. Today is not only Drag Me to Church Sunday, but it is also Potluck and Forum after church. Woohoo! So I know that some food has arrived. We will begin no later than noon on the lower level to share our potluck. If you didn't happen to bring anything, Please stick around. We will pray for a loaves and fishes moment. I think that is like, oh, Polly Parsons has a tip. I brought a whole roast turkey, y'all. A whole roast turkey? You're staying for dinner. All right, yes, sir. Well, Sister Miriam brought a quiche. <laughs> so. Um, there you go. What a little. Oh, yes. So, potluck, lower level, stick around. Um, you can also run out and bring something back to share at noon. And then, after we have our shared meal, we'll have our forum where we're going to talk about what to expect during the Pastor Nathan's renewal leave, who is overseeing what, um, information about programming that's coming up for the congregation during that time. We're also going to have a brief update on where we are for our building search, and then a brief financial update as well. So join us for the lunch and stick around for the forum. We're scheduled to be concluded no later than 1.30. So if you have somewhere else to go, you can go there afterwards. What else? Since I didn't make notes, as Pastor Nathan so conscientiously does, we have our Wednesday evening. I think this Wednesday at 5.30, is it the last session of the Anatomy of Peace study group? That's right. Is it too late if anyone wants to show up just for the last session? What do you think? Come on, come on, y'all, come on, y'all. 5.30, online only, the Zoom link is found in the e-newsletter. <clears throat> also, only two weeks from now, yikes, is Holy Week and Easter. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we have a few things going on here at MCC Portland. On Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, we'll be gathering here for a, a small, informal, simple time of meal and worship. 
We'll invite you to gather up here at 6 p.m. We'll have foot washing very informally, and then we'll retire to the lower level, a simple soup and bread meal that we'll share, and then we'll conclude with communion. So join us on Thursday evening. On Friday, Good Friday, we'll have an online version of the Way of the Cross. It's very simple, uh, very similar to the Stations of the Cross that'll be provided for you. You can do it any time during the day on Good Friday, and I'll be hosting an online meditation on that same Way of the Cross at noon. And the link for that is the Zoom link for that online at noon is found in the e-newsletter as well. And on Easter Sunday, our tradition is we begin our Easter Sunday outside at Washington Park, 7 a.m. overlooking the city of Portland. Bring your own folding chair. We have a beautiful time of worship as the sun has risen over our city and we celebrate that first, those first moments of Easter Resurrection Sunday. 7 a.m. Washington Park. You'll find the location map also a link in the e-newsletter. Then come back here beginning about 8.30 until a little bit before 10. We have a hosted Easter breakfast, so yay. Oh, I'm curious, just a show of hands, who is likely to be on site for that Easter breakfast? Let's just get a count of hands so those who will be preparing know Two, four, six, eight, ten, and anyone online? Looks like we might end up with 20 or so. So just a, we can also do another count next week, just so those who are preparing know what to prepare. So here between our 7 a.m. in the park and here at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday, our worship, we have hosted brunch. And then of course, 10 a.m. Easter Sunday resurrection worship with MCC Portland. What else do I need to remember? I think that pretty well covers it. Have I forgotten anything other than inviting the offering? I think, okay, pardon? I think I already reminded people of the connection card, both in the room and online, but it never hurts to remind, it never hurts to remind. As we prepare to worship with the giving of our offerings, if you're here on site, your options, you can place your offering in the plate in the center aisle. You can use your credit or debit card at the donation station in the lobby. You can also have your offering sent directly here to this location. If you're joining us online, you can make your donation online through the link that's provided in the, in the um, comment section of our live stream. You can also make your donation on our Facebook page with the donate button at any time you're visiting our Facebook page. Please pray with me. <clears throat> God, again, we're grateful to have the gift of this community where your spirit allows us to be our authentic, quirky, queer, beloved selves. And we bring all of that into your presence and the presence of one another. From that place of deep joy and gratitude, we offer these our gifts in response. We pray for those gifts that have already been given, those that are being given in this moment, and those that are being prepared to be given so that they might be blessed and multiplied, not only for the strengthening of our community, so that we might bless and strengthen others. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All
Welcome to the table. Well now, we can't have this much big hair in the room and no gospel music. Mm -mm. Sing along with me. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never lose its power right. That's this table. That's where we are right now together. Because Jesus' blood mattered. Because the blood of his followers mattered. Because the blood of drag queens and trans kids and gay and lesbian individuals matters. Because the blood of immigrants matters. And the blood of unhoused people matters. And they're remembered, and they're precious. And because Jesus had a body that bled, we share with him that experience of being human. So, Y'all still hear me? On that night, before he was to bleed, he had a meal with his disciples. And he took the bread. He broke it. Blessed it. Bless are all the broken bodies. And he told them, This is my body too. This is one of the ways I am like you. Every time you eat broken bread, remember me. And remember, we're connected. And he took the wine, poured it out into a cup. And he passed it to them, saying, every time you drink fruit that has been crushed, remember that I have been crushed just like you. Remember me. And so we do. When we gather, we remember him through blood, 
through wine, through bread, through body. And we allow one bite at a time our lives to become his. Blessed are you, the lamb who bled and was broken. Blessed are all those who bleed and are broken. Blessed are our bodies and our blood. I'm going to invite you to come forward and receive. I will dip the bread in, in the juice for you and hand it to you. If you would prefer to stay at your seat, you're welcome to use one of the individual service, service packets that you'll find in the back of the pew in front of you. Everything here is free of alcohol and gluten, so there will be no barriers. At MCC Portland, there are no barriers because that's what we believe the kingdom of God is like. You don't have to believe anything. There's no test of faith. You don't have to have fasted or prayed or asked forgiveness this morning for any sins. We don't care. We're not asking. Jesus just wants you at this table. Everything else will work itself out. History says that others don't actually know what's best for us anyway. So I suggest you talk to God directly. The table's ready. Thank you, Lord, for this meal, for nourishing us in mind, body, and blood.
Make sure you join us down there. We'll begin about noon. Everything should be ready. And I do want to point out that you've seen Rainy taking pictures of a few of us. We'd love if you are in any kind of drag this morning and you would like to have a picture. We can have some group pictures, etc. Come up after after we sort of get everyone out and Rainy will take some pictures of us just to memorialize the occasion so we see how glorious we all look. And is that last but not least? Ah, oh my heavens, okay. Oh yes, all right. <laughs> Beloved friends, fellow children of God, let us recall that we have not just watched church. We have not just been dragged to church. We are the church. Go in peace, sharing signs of love and peace. So this is difficult to me. 
Yeah. 